Yo, what's up everybody? How's it going? Today we're playing World of Dota Duos with Straka, as you guys requested. A mode is made by Panda Life. Bit of a rambly video, get ready for that. Uh, but yeah, anyways, let's get into the game. All right, friends, we got ourselves a Naga Siren, which is a fairly strong early game hero that also scales very nicely into the late game. And Straka picked a Witch Doctor, which I think is also good. This is actually our second attempt at this. The first time around, we played Bounty Hunt on Anti-Mage, and that didn't work at all. You really need early game for duos. It's very, very important. So if we get this, we remove Mirror Image, but we get a double attack. We're not going to get this. This is a trap, right? This is actually really, really bad. Double attacks are kind of fine, I guess. But Mirror Image is just a very strong ability. And we are not required to get rid of Mirror Image for the rest of this build path. Um, so we're not going to go for it. Instead, I'm just going to immediately go for some uh, some base damage. Something along those lines. Um, but yeah, we're playing Naga Siren here. We're going for a, a universal attack-based mid late game carry ish build but because we have the illusions of course with naga's iron we immediately become powerful which is very nice that's incredibly helpful and that's exactly what you need in duels you need to be strong right away um it's also kind of tricky how do you share farm because there is no gold sharing it's just whoever gets the last hit gets the money but of course you know you don't want to split up so how do you how do you farm camps uh, honestly, I have no idea. No idea what the correct answer there is. I don't know how you're supposed to do it. Uh, but for now, I guess we're just going to be wandering around together and we'll figure it out somehow. All right, I'll just leave this camp to him and then I'll go to the next one. Oh, this has been taken already. Okay. Um, there is a disruptor. I don't currently have a good way of grabbing this kill, unfortunately. But... Are you gonna... Oh, you're gonna corner yourself. Well, that makes my life easier. Well, yeah, okay. That's that's a freebie. Very nice. Very nice. And then we can come over here. Yeah, this is what I mean with Naga Siren, right? Like, even though she is a late game carry, the illusions are just so good. They're so good. They're so good. Which is why it's kind of doubly bad to get rid of them. <laughs> Especially in the early game. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, did he just die? No. I just, ah, just farming. Okay, good, good, good. Alright, that's fine. We'll ignore that. Don't really want to be part of that situation, if I'm completely honest. And I'm gonna just continue farming you. Alright, we get ourselves... Oh, an opportunity is what we get. Okay. Got it, good. I'll send the illusions in, no. No, I think we're fine. We don't need to overcommit right here. Very good, very good. Grab ourselves the uh, power treads. On Naga, I think power treads are better. I usually like face boots on melee heroes because it's very important that we get close, right? If we can't get close, then it doesn't matter what else we're doing because we're still not going to be able to get a kill. Uh, but on Naga's Iron, our illusions don't benefit from face boots. So I think face boots are kind of not as good. <laughs> so I'm going to skip those right here. Okay, then. Get ourselves more strength. Uh, we could go universal right away if we wanted to, by the way. Which is not a bad idea. Uh, Naga's Iron is the kind of hero, even in World of Dota, where we can just play her without needing anything fancy. We can just go for items and build stats and then murder people. And maybe we should actually do that before we really dig into strength all that much. Ooh, that is interesting. I, that seems impossible, though. That's a really big stack. It's kind of an interesting strategy, by the way. Like, the, legitimately, this is something you can do. Where if there is a red camp and you don't want somebody stealing it, you just stack it because then it becomes impossible to kill. And it's like, okay, well, I mean, I can't take it anymore, but really nobody else can. But the risk, of course, is that maybe somebody is actually strong enough somehow. And in that scenario, you just kind of stack the camp for them, which is bad. What do we get? Um, this right here, it's the idea's physical damage per second is very good. Maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up right now. There we go. I'm going to pick this up for the moment. Okay, heal, heal, heal. Uh-huh. I think this guy back there is definitely dead. My illusions, but I'm hoping I can actually survive. I mean, I am dead. 
I'm not dead. Oh, I'm very dead. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm super dead. So I'm hoping Straka got that kill. Yeah, okay, that's good. That's good. There's this situation. Yeah, the fights are huge, right? And uh, the hunting down of people that just killed you is doubly bad in this. Because, you know, we've got two people respawning. But yeah, I'm gonna get um, the ensnare damage. Because I do think that is very powerful. Do we have a stun? I have a sleep. Oh, this one. Damn it. Oh, no. Wait, that wasn't even the right one. Oh, we were getting baited. Oh, that's, that's kind of annoying. All right, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for uh, just that one level of Ensnare. Oh, sorry. Uh, that upgrade of Ensnare. Not one level, but that upgrade of Ensnare. I'll max that out. Then I'm going to go Universal, and then I'm going to go back into investing more into Strength. I think that seems like a good plan here. That way we also get to uh, stay agility until we become the better attribute. Hello. Do you see what I mean with death comes quicker in this version of World of Dota? You just get murdered immediately. That's a really interesting thing about it. Normal Dota 2 is designed in such a way that heroes can't really kill each other one on one. Of course, they can. Right? I'm not saying that it's impossible, but I am saying that, generally speaking, the game is designed in a way that... Uh, oh, nice. Wow, that's a good kill with such little time to spare as well. But generally speaking, the game is designed in such a way that if um, two heroes fight one-on-one, -on -one, the fight is going to take a long time. Assuming they are kind of a similar levels of farm. Of course, if a position one fights a position five, <laughs> that can be over very quickly. However, on the other side of it, um, okay, we've got a two-on-two -two duel, by the way. On the other side of it, like, if you have three heroes attacking a single target, then you can kill them really quickly, right? And that's, like, the, the core idea of it. It's, you're supposed to cooperate with your team. That's what Dota is about, after all. However, World of Dota, you don't have a team, so it's balanced for one-on-one -on -one fights. One-on-one -on -one fights can be over very, very quickly. Oh, no. Alright. Yeah, it seems the... Seems the Lion and the Draw Ranger take this one. I should actually pick up some stats really quick. Let me get some Wraith Bounds. But in World of Dota, the game is balanced for one-on-one -on -one fights. So you can kill each other one-on-one. -on -one. So as soon as you introduce a second hero into it, you can actually just... Ah, oh, get kills very quickly. There's my team. There's my team. Very good. There's also another team coming up here. We'll let them go. Do we chase them? I've got Song. Is it just the one guy? Oh, man. Okay, I know we got fucked up. <laughs> that wasn't good. That wasn't good at all. The Rubik uh, seemed to still have the Lion stun and then managed to steal the Witch Doctor stun as well. Okay then. Are we last now? Ooh. That's not good. Yeah, I haven't quite figured out farming in this yet. That's definitely been an issue. We gotta level up in Snare. It's a very high damage ability. Because of uh, this upgrade, so. Alright, uh, get more agility. Indeed. There's also a very nice additional upgrade here, which is even more agility. How fantastic is that? Summon this. Now we probably also want to build some utility, I'm guessing. Because damage is already so high, I'm not sure we need that much more damage. And instead, we can go for more utility-based items. I'm still getting a Diffuser Blade because, you know, you're playing Naga Siren in World of Dota. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain Diffuser Blade. <clears throat> Leave a rating on the video! More agility.
Coming over here. There's a Medusa. Okay. Nice. Quick kill. What's Straka even building? Indeed. Int. That's cask. That's a strong build. Okay. Good. <laughs> I was a bit worried. <laughs> so that's a diffuser blade. And now I go for agility here. Try to dodge it. I think I did dodge it. Yeah. My goal was to dodge it enough that uh, Straka doesn't get hit. And I think that did happen. We got it. Good. Oh, man. My illusions keep getting murdered. Oh, no. He's dead. No. <laughs> All right. I managed to take her down. Finger! Just from around the corner. Um, this is a harpoon. This is actually kind of useful, but I think we need to wait with that. If we can get that, I would like to get it. I also wonder if I even want my strength capstone. Ensnare cannot be dispelled. Remove Song of the Siren and get 75 damage. <sighs> Some of that is good. Some of that is really nice, but I feel like Song of the Siren might actually be helpful here. Not sure. So I've committed us into being uh, agility for the moment, but that's fine. Agility is a good attribute. Just as long as we don't have to be int. <laughs> Very nice. Take this. What's our next item? I feel like BKB is really important here. Does that help? Hmm. Manta might be good. Does that help? What am I worried about? Am I gonna deal enough damage if I get BKB? I feel like I might not do enough attack damage with BKB. So that doesn't seem great. Oh, hello. Gonna keep my distance from this. But our ensnare does a lot of damage. So maybe I don't actually need to deal that much. I think that's a reasonable argument. And in a in a two versus two, BKB I think is mandatory. Okay, we'll wait this out. Nice. I'm a little silenced. I am a little silenced. Yeah, I'm just gonna get it. I feel like BKB is an item we will need here one way or another. There's not really... There's not really any way we can get around it. So. That seems fine. Um, let's increase the Riptide damage. As I said, I would like to go Universal right now. Just so it's out of the way. And it is quite a lot of power. Okay, this guy's out of mana. There's the Drow Ranger. I am dead, yes. Can he do it? That's one kill. Okay. Well, I don't know. I'm not, not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure how good that was. I don't like these. I'm just going to get money. Okay, we're fighting the Rubik and the Medusa. So, what's our best case scenario here? Medusa ultimate. I catch her with my ultimate. We wait out the Medusa ultimate. Then we kill him. Indeed. Okay, so we pretend we dive. We use the sleep. Oh, he's already dead. Okay. Oh, well, that's it, right? I don't think I can do anything about him by myself. Now, I don't think this knocks us out. We do get two lives, I believe. But, uh, yeah. My plan did work. 
I got that much done. <laughs> that much was good. <laughs> but unfortunately, the uh, Rubik ended up taking down the Witch Doctor. No slithering yeah, BKB seems just necessary. Alright, we'll take down this. <clears throat> oh no. Alright, this guy's dead. Uh, I'm just gonna fucking go in, I don't care. <laughs> uh... Uh, this is not minimal. Oh, Abaddon, Abaddon, Abaddon. Is that a strength build? Yeah, it's a strength build. It's a lot of damage. A thousand damage, that quickly. As I said, you die rapidly. Grab you. Level up this, level up this. With that, we have the BKB. And now that we have BKB... Oh, that's a good camp. Take this. Um, hmm. I'm gonna just try to steal this camp. Okay, that's good. There are a lot of heroes here. I'm very dead. Three different teams. And nobody seems to like me. <laughs> All of this. And with this, we are universal. So that's good. We've got that out of the way. This right here is a very good upgrade. Oh, man. Naga Siren just has such good upgrades. I, it's just easy, right? Because, like, it's Naga Siren. It's the greatest Stoda hero of all time. So it doesn't surprise me, but it still always blows me away just how good she actually is. Take down all of this. See, chat has found a new mode. That's good. Indeed. I don't think I want to go Manta. Bloodborne seems alright. I'm not super keen on it. No, oh, I lost vision. Man, Abaddon is a problem. It's not enough, right? No. I don't know what I do about the Abaddon. I mean, late game, I can just kill him, I think. Maybe. I suppose that's really the only plan we've got. It's just such a difficult hero to interact with. I'm kind of keen on upgrading my Diffuser Blade right now. Nah, oh, shit. Uh, okay, this is a good opportunity for the uh, Witch Doctor. Oh, he's, he's dead. <laughs> okay, we at least got a kill. <laughs> Sorry, that's not how I thought that was going to work out. So now we have a chance to um, root them when we attack them. Okay. Ooh, I need a dispel. Uh, I did not get that kill. I got that kill at least. But now I'm sort of dead. Oh, I'm very dead. Alright. So now we have a 60% chance to cast and sneer for one second on all enemies in a radius. Naga Siren. Go. 
good. I think we still have to duel him. Oh, man. 60%, my guy. 60%. There she is. Okay, come on. This is your dream scenario, right? Is this not it? Is this not the best case? Come on. All right, double kill. Good. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Hold this up. Oh, I'm dead. Um, 400 health. Hell yeah, I'll take 400 health. I feel like magic resistance would actually be so good here. <laughs> Reeling. Reeling seems handy. So this now, um, it's just like a damage amp. That's all it does, really. It just amplifies how much damage we deal. Good news, we don't have to duel. I'm guessing Abaddon wins. I'm not even saying that this team wins. I think Abaddon could probably solo the other team. <laughs> He's so broken. <laughs> so strong right now. Yeah. Hey, Ivan. Did you see the, the Rocco and Norin video? I made a new Magic the Gathering video on the other channel. And it is... It, it kind of like... For, for a little while yesterday, it, it was doing really big numbers for like a couple hours. Um, and then it, it stopped, but it's still doing really solid numbers. Like for, there was one hour yesterday at 2 p.m., 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., the video got 800 views, which is really good. That's really high. Um, and right now it's getting 100 views an hour, which is still really good, actually. Um, it's not even just good for like, you know, a tiny YouTube channel that has four videos on it. That's just good for a YouTube channel. Those are good numbers. I saw you posted it. <laughs> Just say you didn't see it. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I don't mind if you don't see it. But I don't need to listen to this garbage. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh huh. All right, come on, do it. Ah, oh, it's not enough. But this should be right. Come on. There's no way you don't kill him. No, Straka. No, no. How? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, my guy. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. He even has more money than me. It's not even that he's like poor. Okay. Because I got a fun score right now. 11, 11, 11. You got the capstone? Did you get there? Oh, you only now got to your capstone. Okay, well that kind of. All right, but now that he has it, okay. Now, now, now the build actually starts doing stuff. I think. <clears throat> oh, as I stated, I watched the video and I really enjoyed it. And also, funny deck. Well, I'm glad. Thank you very much. Should I get rid of song? What do you guys think? I think we will. I think we will, but I don't feel great about it. Pick up this. <clears throat> I was so shocked when I heard Gandalf. I keep forgetting they made Lotra cards. <laughs> I just think Gandalf is funny. There's some big controversy in the Magic the Gathering community right now. Can I tell you about this? Like, it's not... Like, I mean, I guess it's Magic related. But it's not... It's more like... Uh, kind of like an interesting perspective, I think. To have as, like, an outsider. Wait, are you dead? Oh, you're dead. Okay, never mind. I, I was waiting for the ultimate, but I guess it didn't happen. Or I guess it's like a... Hmm, how do I put it? It's interesting as a spectator, I think. Even if you don't play the game. 
So, Magic has been doing something called Universes Beyond. We have for the very longest time, Magic was Magic, right? You would have, they would have their own original characters, their own original worlds, and so on. And that was like what was portrayed on the card, that was the setting of the game. But then in the past couple of years, they've started doing, as I mentioned, Universes Beyond. And Universes Beyond is basically them taking other IPs and putting them on Magic cards. Ooh, let me see if I can get this. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, it's just gonna take a really long time, which is a problem. Wait, Straka died again? Fuck. <laughs> Alright, Song, I'll wait. <laughs> I'm dead, goddammit. <clears throat> so, they started doing Universes Beyond. And it started with, like, some... I think it started with the Walking Dead. They made some Walking Dead cards, which people were like, why are you making Walking Dead cards? Who gives a shit about the Walking Dead? <laughs> but that's what they started with. And that, that was a bit weird. Um, oh, man. That's not good. No, Straka keeps getting silenced. God damn it. <laughs> Oh, and he's dead again. <laughs> he's dying. Oh, did you at least get the kill? You got the kill. Okay, that's good. That's good. Make a splash. I need a nullifier. So, you say. so they made the Walking Dead cards. And there were some people that were unhappy about it. And blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Uh, they continued making them. And there are now all kinds of different um, Universes Beyond cards. There are Transformers cards, and Lord of the Rings cards, and uh, My Little Pony cards. They just announced Spongebob cards. So there are some that are, that fit more into the setting of the game, like Lord of the Rings, which, you know, like, I mean, that fits really nicely with the general high fantasy of magic. Um, and then there are some that, you know, don't. <laughs> There's some there just kind of like, huh? <laughs> Why is that a thing? And uh, generally speaking, the universes beyond cards, from my experience, they're actually really well made. Something worth saying here, right? They, they're really well made. There's clearly a lot of effort put into them. So they're not just like a quick cash grab. They're actually making an effort to portray things accurately. And they do quite a lot of, like, obviously they do quite a lot of research and so on. Like, this is something that they take seriously. No, I was gonna get this kill, God damn it! Okay. <clears throat> but recently... Oh. Generally speaking, those cards, though, aren't you allowed to, to be played in, like, the standard competitive format, which is called standard. Right? So there are certain competitive formats where those cards are allowed, but most formats you can't play them in. I need to kill this guy before I do anything else. I am dead. Alright, Straka. Oh, are we knocked out? We're not knocked out. Okay, good. Yeah, it's just such big AoEs. Such big AoEs. So the... Uh, Generally speaking, the cards aren't allowed to be played in competitive play. However, there has been an adjustment to that recently. And that's where like a lot of the drama comes in. Where Wizards of the Coast just announced that Universes Beyond would be legal in standard. And what that means is that you can now, they are now part of default competitive play. So if you watch a Magic the Gathering tournament up until this point, what you would get to see is Magic the Gathering characters fight other Magic the Gathering characters. But now, um, going forward, it's going to be Iron Man fighting Spider-Man. <laughs> like, like, legitimately. Like, there's legitimately a set coming out next year that is um, Marvel Spider-Man themed. And there are people that are really unhappy about this. Right? There are a lot of people that are just like, we really care about the lore. And here's the thing, though. Here's my opinion. I think they're lying. 
<laughs> so, Magic's lore is kind of like Dota lore, in a way. Where there are a bunch of people that like the lore. There's a few people that really care about it. But for the mass, vast majority of people, the, the lore is more of a backdrop. Right? It's just like, it's nice that it exists, but it's not a focal point. And if you were to ask them about it, they wouldn't really be able to tell you anything about it. But, of course, the lore exists as kind of like a world-building element and so on. So that's how most people treat it. But despite that, there's been a huge outcry about people not wanting to play with Marvel cards in Standard, or not wanting to play with... with um, well, what's it called? With, uh, with Spongebob cards. Nice. Good kill. Uh, what do we want here? Here's damage. Status resistance. I think I'll just take damage reduction. No, cast range is really good. Alright, that's a kill. Um, I don't know if I can get there. Oh, this is annoying. <laughs> oh, no! God damn it. <sighs> At the same time, uh, a lot of the recent set releases have been kind of whack. And I think there's a certain, there's something that, like, I find really interesting about that. Where um, people are saying, look, we don't really want Universes Beyond, but Universes Beyond cards at least have, like, a coherent world. Well, recent Magic sets don't have that. And that's kind of, like, where I'm at a little bit. Where I'm like, over, hmm. Oh, hello. Freaking Drow Ranger. She just <laughs> kills us. It's wild. I mean, I'm getting a Satanic now, right? That way we can survive a little bit longer. I am dead. I am indeed dead. I am indeed dead. dead is. Okay. Sorry, I guess what I'm trying to say, like, to kind of, like, sum it up. I feel like I'm actually going a little bit into, too much into the details. People are complaining that they're gonna have to play with Spongebob cards. At the same time, the Sponge Spongebob cards are selling better than anything has ever sold before. The Lord of the Rings set they did was one of their best-selling sets of all time. I think the second best-selling set ever. Okay. And now there's uh, a lot of infighting in the community about what to do with this. Like, like how do you... What is there to take away from all of this? Do you not have your ultimate? Why what? I feel like we keep catching that guy without his ultimate. Which makes me think that he doesn't have the ultimate. I don't know why that would be... Okay. Are there Warhammer 40k magic cards? Yes. Abaddon, Abaddon took jousting? What? Wait, why did the Abaddon level jousting? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Just throwing the game, I take it. Alright. 
Oh, this is F. Okay. The Abaddon level jousting? He did. Oh my god. Well, that's just not good. Do I get unwavering condition? Nah, right. Lincoln's is fine. Mine's health steal isn't magic damage. Is it not? Alright, I'm just gonna trust you on this. I'll just get a mirror shield. <clears throat> so these are out. So it's just us versus the lion and the draw ranger. But yeah, what the company is saying, what wizards are saying, is that it's bringing in a lot of new people. Right, all of these crossovers are bringing in a lot of new people. And the people in the community are complaining that it's turning the game into Fortnite. And I mean, like, there's a certain truth to that, right? Like, it is turning the game into Fortnite. It is becoming Super Smash Brothers. It is becoming, like, a crossover thing. But there is a certain... So, like, I think there's a certain element to this whole thing. Which, by the way, yes, there are Fortnite cards. <laughs> like, it's not even... Like, they are literally Fortnite-themed cards. They do already exist. Um, that they, they already did that. Mm. So, what's interesting to me about it, I suppose, is that... If we look at Pokemon, right, the Pokemon trading card game, or Pokemon in general, they don't do anything like this, and they would never, right? The Pokemon trading card game takes its IP very, very seriously, and it is very, very successful. And I think that's fascinating. Okay, so they split up in a way that's really favorable for us. Wait, do you have... Why? Why? I don't need... I don't even deal magic damage. Wait. The Witch Doctor doesn't really deal magic damage either. Does he? No, I think the Witch Doctor deals magic damage. Why would the Drow Ranger get an unwavering condition? Cask is magic. Okay. But, like, like, even if the cask is magic, don't I just, like, murder her if she has an unwavering condition? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, so much of this nonsense. I died? Okay, I can't hit her. I need I need magic resistance. If I get Mage Destroyer, can I even get close? Maybe I just get an evasion cape. I need to keep movement speed. Nah, I think we get the Mage Destroyer. I have too many too many buttons. So much disabled there. Huh. But we got him. Yeah, I mean, I really think that unwavering condition is just a mistake. Isn't it? That just seems actively bad. Hmm. Oh well. Yes. 
Pokemon is a really interesting thing. I think. Because I've been watching, like, Pokemon content recently. Content about the Pokemon trading card game. And it's fascinating to me because it's so different than what I'm used to, which is magic, right? Because in the Pokemon trading card game, 100% of the emphasis is placed on just having cool artworks, like on little trading cards. Like, people do play the game that does exist, but pretty much most of the game is just focused on collecting stuff. Oh, yeah, sure, that's fine. <laughs> this is so annoying. <laughs> oh my god. What do I do? I think Mirror Shield is not great. What the Draw Ranger is doing is she's shooting me with the E-Blade, which cancels the Mirror Shield and applies the, the Feral to her. Forget about all the stuff with the, with the card games. We need to focus. So I'm getting a Trident. I think for sure. I'm gonna buy Moon Sange. Indeed. Make a splash. From sea to shore. All right, that's a good kill. Yeah, she randomly has that. That item still. I'm not sure what the goal is. But that's not gonna work. The unwavering condition isn't good for her. to target down her first. Anyway. I can't get close enough. Oh, he's dead. Alright, then I need to just try to kill this. Kill the Drow Ranger. I have all the. Like, I can easily kill the lion. I'm actually not worried about killing the lion at all. Actually, maybe we should have gotten the double hit, to be honest. I'm not sure how much my illusions do. That's a lot of damage, but that's okay. This kind of does a little bit. Ooh, I might be dead. She's going for me. Good. I think that's it. I think we win. Because I, I can solo the lion. Like, that's fine. Can I? <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. Oh my god, that's so much disable. Yeah, I, I mean, I have Satanic. Got him. Nice. Oh my god. 
Well, I was kind of stupid. <laughs> so now you got to see it once. I think you can see what I mean with, like, the game just, it's it's so insta-kill focused. Uh, I find it a bit frustrating. But we managed to actually get a good win, I think. That was a good win. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And let me finish up my thoughts. Sorry, I hate leaving stuff in the room like that. I started talking about it. I'm gonna finish up my thoughts, okay? So the thing is, right, the thing is, like other games, like the Pokemon trading card game, um, has this really strong IP where it's all about the Pokemon cards and it's all about collecting the Pokemon cards. And it's a really interesting thing about Pokemon as a whole, right? Like, because like, what's the most important aspect of Pokemon? What's like the thing that makes Pokemon Pokemon? Well, it's the collectability of the creatures. Like, that's the thing they've been advertising from the very beginning, right? Like, the goal of the Pokemon games isn't to beat the Elite Four, it's to gather all the Pokemon. That's what the, the games constantly tell you, right? It's uh, the same thing in the anime. We gotta catch them all. That's the whole point. And that makes sense if you transfer that into a card game. And that's how people are treating it, right? It's all about collecting all of them. And I think that's really interesting. Um, well, Magic has always been a game. Uh, even in the past, it was actually primarily um, seen as kind of like a vehicle for just a rule, rule set. And then in the original vision of Magic, there would be new worlds with entirely different settings that are constantly explored. And they kind of did that, but like not in the way that they're doing it now, where they're literally just getting Final Fantasy in, which is literally happening next year. You know what I mean? And so it's fascinating to me where uh, one company, they put emphasis on their rules, while the other company put emphasis on their IP. And now the company with their IP has an obviously much better time just sticking to the IP and selling that, even if the cards themselves aren't playable. That's another thing I find really fascinating, where in Magic, the good cards are the expensive ones, while in Pokemon, the rare pretty ones are the expensive ones. So in Magic, there might be, like, there are cards that are really, really good, but super ugly, and so they're really expensive. It doesn't matter how ugly they are, because it's about the playability. But in uh, Pokemon, if you have a card that's really, really good, but super ugly, well, I mean, it might be a few bucks. It's just there's, there's some people that play the game competitively, right? But like primarily, it's just the collectors don't give a shit about it. They want the fancy expensive one. Uh, they, they want the fancy beautiful ones, right? And I think that's really, really interesting. Um, so now what can Wizards do with this? Well, what they are doing is they're just like saying, okay, well, we're basically renting out the rule set. We have designed a rule set that's really good. It's really good. So whatever, you can buy the rule set from us and we'll print your shit on the cards. And there are some people that don't like that and there are some people that do like that. And I'm kind of in the middle because on the one hand, I'm like, I really enjoy when Magic does a good job with its world. But I also have been reading a lot into the world that Magic has built. And let me be honest with you, they haven't done a good job with it. So since it seems to be very difficult for them to actually nail the narrative stuff, maybe it makes sense to just borrow the narrative stuff from somewhere else and just focus on the rules aspect. And I don't know. I don't know. I just think it's interesting. Sorry. I, I feel like this is maybe something that like two people care about or have an opinion on. And I don't even know if I managed to convey any specific points other than like, hey, this is kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.